Hi, I'm Poet and Writer Kay Spivey. Today I want to talk about penny pinching tips. These are going to be tips that'll work even if you're not a writer. These are just general money saving advice types of things. The starving artist stereotype may just be a stereotype, but at the same time, we have to be realistic about the fact that we're in an industry that's hard, and so I put together some realistic tips that I would use and that I would recommend to my friends for trying to save some money just here or there just to kind of help you build up a savings account because you know we need it for those bad times. The first piece of advice I have for you is to stop eating out and stop getting food delivered. Let's just start with the eating out. If you can learn to cook a couple of things and buy the main ingredients for those things in bulk, like if you really like making pasta and you can stock up when spaghetti noodles are on sale and you can get some tomato paste and some diced tomatoes in cans, keep them in the back of your cupboard, they're not gonna go bad, you can just get a whole bunch of those. You can make a meal for well under five bucks just using a little bit of seasoning and it's gonna be a lot cheaper than going out and eating somewhere where the prices are inflated. If you can learn to make a couple dishes really, really well with ingredients that you can get readily available and for very, very cheap, you are going to be really well off. The amount of money that you're going to save just on a weekly basis, just if you do this like Monday through Friday, you cook for yourself, and then Saturday, Sunday, you even go splurge, you're still going to save a lot of money by not constantly going out to eat, including if you're going somewhere like McDonald's, you're still spending less money if you're using the bulk items that you have rather than constantly even eating off of the dollar menu. This isn't realistic for everyone. If you can buy a few things in bulk when they're on sale, do that and it is gonna save you some money. The other thing would be don't order delivery. And I'm talking like for any reason. <laughs> if you are ordering delivery because you don't wanna leave your house, then girl, you need to get up, you need to get outside. Delivery fees and service fees are now outrageous. It's not worth using Uber Eats, it's not worth using DoorDash, it's not worth using any of those because you're paying probably twice as much as you'd pay if you just got your butt down there yourself. It's one thing if you're in a position where you cannot leave, like if you have a short lunch break and there's nothing to eat around you and you've got to have something ordered, okay, fine. Try not to make that a habit and try not to have that be something you do at home just because you're lazy because the amount of money you're spending just to have someone else pick it up and bring it to you is outrageous these days. It is not worth it. Save your money by just going and getting your own food. If you're gonna order out, you're not gonna make it yourself, get up and go get it yourself. Or unless you are incapable of going out for some reason, it could be a worthwhile expense then. That brings me into my second thing, which is you need to prioritize your expenses. Delivery might be one of those things that like, if that is truly worth it to you, then that needs to be part of your budget that you're planning on spending probably double what you normally would spend going somewhere and getting your food to have it brought to you. And just keep that in mind, that that is an expense that you've prioritized, so maybe you need to cut back somewhere else. But also things like subscription fees, like subscription boxes, if you have a ton of them coming and they don't spark joy or excite you when they get here, probably those should be cut out. If you're paying for a premium membership to something you're not using anymore, that needs to get cut out. If you have a premium membership to something, you need to use it or not be spending money on that. If you have any kind of a membership to something, you should be using that. If you've got a gym membership, even if it's only $10 a month, you gotta show up probably more than once a month to make that worthwhile. Otherwise, you need to think about whether or not that's something that's worthwhile in your life. And obviously, if you're only spending $10 a month at the gym, Good to keep that fee and lock that in place but at the same time you need to make the things that you're getting things that are worthwhile to you this is also you do not need to be buying the newest items if you're on a budget you kind of need to prioritize when you're getting new tech things if the newest iphone comes out and yours is still working unless that is something that is high on your priority list you need to think about whether or not you need that new iphone you need to think about whether or not you need a new computer if your laptop is still working but is maybe a little bit slower. Like you need to figure out what your priorities are. This isn't something that someone can tell you. Like to some people going and buying a fancy coffee 
from Starbucks every single morning is a priority. That is something they want to spend money on. Some people buying the newest iPhone is a priority. But if it's not to you, if it's something you feel like you should be doing, but you could easily stick with the phone you still have for another year, you should do that. Don't be putting yourself into a lot of debt buying things that you don't love that you don't want to have deeply or don't need to have because your needs are going to stack up and up and up. You're going to have to buy food. You're going to have to buy clothes. You're going to have to buy gas. So the things that you want, you really need to rank them. And if you can put them off and wait for maybe the next model of phone to come through or something like that, you should wait. You're also going to want to learn how to shop sales. This is something that they should teach you in school. I know they don't, they should. Along with taxes, why don't they teach you how to do your taxes in school? Stupid. Anyway, shopping sales is a little bit complicated. Stores will try to kind of play you. So part of this is getting used to how much do things cost? How much do apples cost this time of year? How much do they cost this time of year? What's the average? What is a good sale? What does that look like? When you want to buy milk, is the gallon cheaper now that it's on sale or is it actually cheaper to get to quartz? You know, you need to look at all of the numbers and be mindful. There's also kind of a strategy involved when you're buying groceries and items that are important to you. If they are on sale and they're want items, then you can get them. But if they're want items and they're not on sale, you need to watch for the price to be lower than it is now and get them next time. If they're need items, then regardless, like you can't wait to buy pads or tampons. You're gonna have to buy them now. But if they're on sale, get two boxes. That kind of thing is gonna end up saving you money in the long term. Stocking up on things when you buy them at a really good sale seems kind of stupid. Seems like, oh, I'm spending more money now. And if you don't have it, that's fine. But if you can afford to buy the two things now, next month when you're maybe a little bit short, you don't have to buy anything because you got it on sale last time. Good deal. Also don't get stuck on brands. There's no reason that you should be buying brand name of your allergy medication or brand name of your headache pills if you're just buying over the counter stuff. Nine times out of 10, it is exactly the same active ingredients in the knockoff brand and it's half the price. So double check, make sure that you're getting the same thing that you're used to getting because you don't want to be just using different medicine if one of them works for you. But you don't need to get the expensive brand name one. Get the like 100 pills rather than the 25 pills of the Target brand and it'll be way cheaper for you. Same goes with food. Now there's some things that are just better if you're one of those people who can differentiate the taste of like Coke versus Pepsi versus the generic stuff, get the one that you like. But if you really don't taste a difference, get the generic stuff. Get the one that's gonna be cheapest for you. It's just gonna make the most sense in the long term. The next one is a little more on the solar punk theme and that's just be mindful of your energy waste. There are three main places that you wanna watch for energy wasting. That's in your lights, in your electricity, and in your water usage. Don't just run the tap just to run the tap. If the tap is running, something should be getting wet with it. You know, like when you're brushing your teeth, the toothbrush is in your mouth, the tap should be off. That kind of thing. Simple stuff like that does add up over time. When you leave a room, turn off the lights. If you think that that's not worthwhile, there is an entire Mythbusters episode for you on that one. Turn off the lights when you leave the room. When you're done filming your YouTube video with all the lights on, they can go off again because there's daylight outside. When there's daylight outside, you really don't need to have your lights on unless you have a room with a house that doesn't use, doesn't use windows. I was about to just say doesn't use windows. It's more of a Mac. <laughs> anyway. There's a room in your house that doesn't have windows, then okay, you need to turn on the lights when you go in there, sure, but most of the time you can get away with a slightly dimly lit room during the daytime, and then you don't need to have lights on all over the house when it's nighttime. Just have them on in the room that you're in. You can have it brightly lit, but you don't need to have that brightly lit, plus the hallway, plus your bedroom if you're only in one room at the time. Be mindful. Be mindful of which electronics are left on. I keep my laptop plugged in all the time too, but I do make sure that it goes into sleep mode. I have it closed when I'm not using it. Other electronics around the house, they aren't on if I'm not using them. I make sure that I turn the PlayStation off when I'm done with Netflix, turn the TV off completely. You don't want to just have things like vampire sucking your electricity. 
if you can do power strips and then turn the whole power strip off when you're not using something, it does save a lot of electricity in the long run, and that's gonna show up in your bills. It's not realistic for a lot of people who are penny pinching, but over time, as you're replacing things, make sure that you're getting the eco-friendly version. Make sure that you're getting light bulbs that are LEDs and are not gonna die for years and years and years, so you're not gonna replace them again. You might spend a little bit more now, but not having to replace your things is a lot better. Or if you need to replace them, like for, for instance, we got new windows this year because the windows were a huge energy suck. They were letting heat out, they were letting moisture in, they were destroying our window sills. The new windows are keeping heat in at a rate that is gonna be like astronomical when we get our heating bill this year. I'm very excited to compare this year and last year for the entire year. For keeping the warm air in in the winter and the warm air out in the summertime the new windows are superb so as you're <laughs> replacing things be mindful don't always go for the absolute lowest cost thing because the lowest cost in the short term sometimes ends up having hidden fees later on be really mindful do your research and get something that's going to last a long time with minimal repair and is going to serve you in some way like reducing your energy bills or like the new car i got is a subaru because it's going to need a lot less maintenance and it's going to be a lot cheaper to maintain than my old car was speaking of maintenance you should learn how to do minor repairs for things for instance, you gotta learn how to unclog your own toilet. <laughs> Hiring a plumber is necessary for a lot of things. Hiring a professional to do many things is important a lot of the time. There are some things that you can handle on your own. For example, you can change a light bulb. You don't need someone to come to your house to change a light bulb. You know to turn off the lights, unscrew, rescrew. Same kind of thing with the toilet. You've got a plunger. You can watch some YouTube videos, you can figure that out. Or for instance, something simple with your car engine. If you can open the hood and be like, hey, I can see that I am out of, say washer fluid, that is not what I want. I'm out of coolant. You can see that, just go buy the coolant rather than take it to a garage and pay extra fees. That kind of thing. When a professional is necessary, yes, hire the professional. Get something done correctly the first time. Don't mess it up. If you're in doubt, if it's too complicated, go ahead and hire someone. But like simple repairs, easy things, things that you think you could handle and you could watch a few YouTube videos and you could get it done, it's going to save you money over the long term and you're going to be able to then replicate it, which is again going to save you money. So learning to do some easy repairs is a really good idea. I'm not saying you need to learn how to rewire the electronics in your house or anything like that, but you shouldn't be hiring someone for something that's kind of minor. If it's something that you're like, oh, I could have done that after they show you next time, try and see. And over over time, the more things you learn how to do and fix for yourself, the better off and the better adult you're going to be. So anyway, those were five tips for saving money, things to be mindful of, things that they really should tell you to do as you're coming out of high school or out of college, things that would really be helpful if someone would just tell us and then we could learn and then it'd be okay. But anyway, I'm not like an economics or finance manager or anything crazy like that. I'm just a person who's been adulting for a little while now, learning how to adult, learning how to budget myself. And these are easy things everyone can do. I'm not great at doing the spreadsheets and like really truly budgeting my life. That isn't necessarily for me. I can follow these steps and save a lot of money now and not have to worry so much about the money I have because I'm able to put away money because I follow all of these steps to the best of my ability. Always cut yourself some slack, always be realistic with yourself, prioritizing is good. I didn't mention thrifting. Going thrift store shopping is a great idea if you're in need of some furniture. My tip is go to all the thrift stores near you and just see. Just see if they happen to have exactly the piece of furniture that you were looking for for like five bucks. Because if they do, you only had to spend five bucks rather than the maybe like 150 that that item is worth. Bonus tip at the end. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Give me a like if you like this type of advice video or if you have any questions, leave them down below and all of that and subscribe and yeah. Anyway, I will talk to you again next time. Good luck to all of us. Bye.